at the Justice Department. Lawrence Tribe is a professor of constitutional law at Harvard University. He joins us tonight from Boston. Mr. Roberts, why did that federal judge in Wichita not have the right to do what he did? Well, first I think it's important to clarify what it is that we did and what we did not do. What we did not do is take a position supporting the activities of the Operation Rescue protesters. There's been some confusion about that and I want it to be clear. Uh, in fact, what our U.S. attorney out in Kansas said in a very firm statement was that everyone must comply with the court orders and that the U.S. Marshals, officers of the Department of Justice, would enforce the court's orders. That needs to be clear. Second, we filed a brief with the court, sending him a copy of a brief we filed in April in the Supreme Court in a related case. It didn't cause much of a commotion back then, explaining that the law under which the uh, abortion clinic uh, providers and patients were suing the demonstrators did not apply in this case. It did not give the federal court jurisdiction. The law is called the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871, and that conveys a pretty good idea about the what the law was intended to do. It was directed against people going out trying to interfere with the constitutional rights of blacks. The Supreme Court uh, indicated in a 1971 decision that the law was limited in that way. It did not apply uh, across the board to any kind of demonstration. It may or may not apply to demonstrations directed against women, but people who are against abortion are not discriminating against women. It's a different issue. The, the, but I understand the first part of your answer is that the, and while this matter is under appeal, the, the U.S. Marshals will continue to enforce, from, from the Justice Department's point of view, the U.S. Marshals will continue to enforce Judge Kelly's rule, is that ruling, is that correct? Absolutely. We think what the department did uh, in Kansas has had a calming effect. It has made clear that the orders of the court must be obeyed, and it has made clear that the marshals will enforce them. And even if, the, even if uh, but at the same time saying, you do not believe the judge's rules are valid. That's right. We're saying we're going to take the issue into the court and litigate it in that forum where it belongs. What our, what our position is, is that the orders will be complied with and obeyed until they're reversed by another court. We're pursuing that uh, avenue. Uh, we just think that the federal court is not the proper place for this case. It should be in state court, and it may be appropriate for the state court to issue an injunction against these activities. Uh, we take no position on that. Our position is simply that this is not within the federal court's jurisdiction. That's what we told the Supreme Court last April, and that's what we told the district court in this case. Professor Tribe, is Mr. Roberts wrong? I think Mr. Roberts is uh, doing a pretty good job of making the government's position sound fairly reasonable. But I, this afternoon, uh, reread what the government's submissions said, the very submissions that so dismayed me when I first saw them yesterday. And I'm afraid Mr. Roberts is, is not being really candid. Uh, it, it's true that the government is not positively approving of the uh, blockade by Operation Rescue, but it's made uh, no uh, doubt at all about the fact that it is urging immediate lifting of this injunction on the ground that, just as Mr. Roberts said, they don't think that the Ku Klux Klan Act gives the federal courts any jurisdiction here. Now, if their position were accepted, that is, if this injunction were immediately lifted while the United States Supreme Court this fall considers the proper reading of that Ku Klux Klan Act, uh, there is no doubt, and the judge found just this afternoon, that there would be uh, the physical shutdown of that clinic, uh, again, so labeled, uh, has been interpreted by every court that's construed it uh, in a much broader way. The words of that law are really much more general. They say that a conspiracy to obstruct any person or class of persons in the exercise of their equal federal rights is unlawful. And the seven United States Courts of Appeals that have addressed the issue have all ruled that conspiracies aimed at women who seek to protect their rights, their rights to interstate travel and their rights to terminate a pregnancy, uh, are covered here. Now, I just reread the government's brief in the Supreme Court. And it is astonishing to me what they say. On page 20 of that brief, they say that the right to have an abortion is not specific to one gender. 
Now, maybe there is a form of reasoning in which you can pretend that abortion has nothing to do with whether these are men or women. But even if that were true, in this case, it's been alleged and the court specifically found that men are allowed to enter the clinic. Male patients are allowed to enter. Male doctors are allowed to enter. It's only women who seek abortions who are not. Now, if the Justice Department is right that the act Congress passed does not apply in this situation, and I think they're wrong, and I think in the end they'll be held wrong, uh, then we will have a very different and quite difficult situation. But in the meantime, to say, as Mr. Roberts says, and as the Attorney General has said, and as the President suggests, that the federal courts have no jurisdiction at all, even to issue an injunction to preserve the peace and avoid bloodshed in the interim, uh, is to revert really to the law of the jungle. Uh, what about that, Mr. Well, Roberts? Of, of course that's not the case. The plaintiffs are free to repair to state court where they should have brought this case in the first place at any time, and if an injunction is appropriate, to secure an injunction from that court. The idea that we're going to be in a no-man's land when there's going to be mayhem and violence in Wichita uh, uh, is, is simply absurd. The, the state court is there to protect the rights of the abortion clinic providers and their patients according to law. That's where this case should have been brought in the first place. It's where they can bring it uh, tonight uh, if they want. Let me ask you this, Mr. Roberts. Would this, is this uh, uh, the, the, the position of the Justice Department is based on the fact that it is in concert with the, the anti-abortion protesters? No. Uh, the, the administration position on abortion has nothing to do either with the case in Kansas, uh, in, in Kansas or with the other case pending in the Supreme Court. It is an interpretation of a very specific 1871 statute. Uh, Professor Tribe uh, uh, paraphrased the statute. What the Supreme Court has said about it, and I'll quote, is that it requires some racial or perhaps otherwise class-based invidiously discriminatory animus behind the conspirators' action. The and Operation that... Rescue protesters are not, are against abortion. There's no doubt about that. They're not against women. So they don't fall within the terms of that statute. That's the position we took in, before the Supreme Court in April. That's what we advised the court in uh, Kansas of uh, yesterday. There's nothing new in that position. There was no uproar when we took the position in April. And uh, frankly, I don't understand uh, why it's being regarded as such a new departure at this time. Professor.